First question, cos of theta is 3 eighths, and theta is not in quadrant one. Find sine and tan. So we will do a lot of questions like this, and I want these questions to start triggering in you triangle questions. Whenever you're given sine, cos, or tan, or anything, and its ratio, and additional information which tells you which quadrant it's in, draw a picture and draw a triangle in that quadrant. So example here, we know it's not in quadrant one. Is it in quadrant two, three, or four? It's going to be in four. How do you know it's in four? Because cos of theta is three eighths. And according to your cast rule, cos is positive in one and in four. And since it's not in one, it has to be four. Now, when drawing your triangle, can you see that I could draw a line straight across horizontally or vertically? We always draw our triangle back to the nearest x-axis because it only works if we have a reference angle. And our reference angle is always back to the nearest x-axis. Now, if cos of theta is 3 eighths, well, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. We can label this side as 3 and this side is 8. Test your a squared plus b squared equals c squared skills. This side is going to be square root of? Sixty-four minus nine, fifty-five. And once you have all of your parts of your triangle labeled, well, the rest is easy. I want to find out what sine of theta is. I look at my reference angle. Sine of my reference angle is root fifty-five over eight. Sine of theta is going to be negative root fifty-five over eight. So after finding the ratio, you still have to think about your cast rule and decide, is it positive or is it negative? If you're unsure, guess, guess negative. Because most people write positive answers, so on the final exam, you find they ask more negative questions than positive ones. Because if people forget, they forget a negative. Nobody ever forgets a positive. Because if they leave it blank out front, it's positive. So don't, but lately, last year or so, because 80% of the questions were negative, they've kind of felt like, oh, we've got to balance this out. So last, last couple years, there's been a few more positive answers. But generally, there seems to be more negative answers than positive ones. Same thing with tan. Tan of theta opposite over adjacent and negative because it's in quadrant four. Is that point on the unit circle? Well, I'm going to just question is, if I went root 3 over 3, comma, root 6 over 3, it's not one of the ones that we labeled, right? We know, we know this one and this one and 45 degrees. We know those points. Those are the points that we know and would be able to recognize. So if the question said is 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2 on the unit circle, you just say, yes, I recognize that it is. But can you see that there are a whole bunch of other points that aren't labeled. Yeah. It's possible that this could be one of them. So how do we figure out if a point is on the unit circle or not? Right, we can use our big idea. Right, on a unit circle, this is always true. And the x-coordinate is cos, and the y-coordinate is sine. So we're wondering, does it equal 1? If it equals 1, then we know that it's on the unit circle. If it doesn't equal 1, 
then we know that it's not on the unit circle. So cos is the x-coordinate. That would be root 3 over 3. We're going to square that. Sine is the y-coordinate. That's going to be root 6 over 3. We're going to square that. This becomes 6 over 9 plus 3 over 9 is equal to 9 over 9. Ah, is it equal to 1? Yes, it is. So we have to check if those values squared equals to 1, then sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That means this works and that point is on our unit circle. So negative 12 comma 13 comma y is a point on the unit circle. We need to find y. It's in quadrant 3. So as far as our triangle questions go, this one's really easy because it already tells us it's in quadrant 3. Label our reference angle. What sides of that triangle can I label? You can label the hypotenuse and the x-axis. We can label the hypotenuse and the x-axis because your x-coordinate is cos. So you see how often we're using this big idea that x-coordinates cos, y-coordinates sine? If I know that cos of theta is negative 12 over 13, now, when labeling your triangle here, it's not bad if you label this just as 12 and this just as 13 and think of them as actual lengths. It's not wrong if you label it as a negative 12 to show that it's going to the left. Either way is fine. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is going to be 5. Isn't that beautiful? That's such a nice triangle, all nice numbers. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Nice numbered triangles. But for now, now that we've got this, we need to find y. y is sine. If I do sine of theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Will it be positive or negative? Okay, that's the thing you're going to forget to check. Once you get your ratio, always do a check afterwards. What quadrant is it in? It's in quadrant 3. Sine is negative in quadrant 3. So sine of theta equals negative 5 over 13. And one of the things that I stressed a little bit in the first unit that I want to keep stressing now is a common mistake is a student would stop right here because they figured it out. You feel so good. Yes, I got it. Let's move on to the next one. Read your question. What did the question say? It said find y. Anywhere in my answer did I say y equals something? No. So even though I know in my head I know that sine of theta is y, you need to, f to say in the end, so y is equal to negative 5 over 13 to show that you understand that the sine of theta is equal to the y coordinate and you've solved it completely. Okay, pretty triangles. We're going to get off topic just for a second, talk about pretty triangles. 5, 12, 13, that's a pretty triangle. Do you know, do you know another pretty triangle? 3, 4, 5, that's your first pretty triangle. That's probably the first pretty triangle you ever met. And we're going to run into a lot of pretty triangles this year, but 5, 12, 13, which we just saw, is another one. I'm going to give you one more, and then I want you to tell me the pattern that I'm developing. It's really cool. And then we're going to find a couple more after this. So I've given you 3, 4, 5 is a pretty triangle. 5, 12, 13 is a pretty triangle. Another pretty triangle is 7, 24, 25. Look for a pattern. Tell me one side that you think I would write on the next one if this is a pattern. Nine. Okay, good. Nice. You're right. That's going to be nine. No, there's no 16 on that triangle. Oh, you're, you're taking this one and uh, you're tripling it. Yeah, that'll make another one, but that would be, that would, 
So you take any of these triangles, you double them or triple them, you will get other triangles that work. So 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15, that works. But I'm looking for another one that's following all the patterns. These are all considered unique Pythagorean triplets. So what do you think are going to be the other numbers on that triangle? Other patterns that you see with the ones on the left. Yeah, three, five, seven, nine. That's the pattern here. So if we do another one, this could be 11. Yeah. But now we have to figure out what the other two sides are. Oh, these are nice triangles. 36 for here. Close, but not quite. 40. Yes, this will be 40. I'm going to ask you in a second how you got that. But before I do that, does anyone have an idea what the other one's going to be? 41. How many people notice the pattern that these are always one different? Good. Now, how did you come up with 40? Did you start here? Did you go here? That's plus 8? Plus 12? So you went plus 8, plus 12, plus 16. Should we check if that works? The so next you would add plus 20. Sure enough, this is the next one. Okay. Now, that pattern is a nice pattern because it helps you find the next one. But if we would keep on going and skip a bunch, say go to 25, how did I in my head figure out that 25 squared plus 312 squared is equal to 313 squared. We know it's one less, but uh, there's a lot of numbers one less that I could put here. How do I know that those are right? Well, how do I know it's not 315, 316, or 317, 318? How did I know? But does that work for this one? It's got to work for all of them. So there's another pattern here that can help you find any one. So this is a good pattern that Mu Yong said, going up by 8, up by 12, up by 16, up by 20. The next one's up by 24, sure enough. So you're saying, look at these two, and then look at this one. What do, well, yeah, what pattern do you notice when you look at that all the way through. Nice. I like it. This is pretty cool. So what he's saying, add the numbers up in the red. 4 plus 5. That's 3 squared. Add the numbers here. 12 plus 13. 25. That's 5 squared. 24 and 25. 49. 7 squared. 312 and 313 make 625. And sure enough, that's 25 squared. Pretty cool. This is, this is, I mean, this is some of the reasons I love math, is there's always these cool patterns that come up if you take the time to look for them and notice them. This is only one group of Pythagorean triplets going up by odd numbers. The first one that doesn't fit this, 8, 15, 17. That's a whole different pattern. So hopefully you can have some fun finding other ones, and we will continue on this afternoon, or this, later this morning.